All right, let's try this again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Corbs Live live stream. All right, just seeing a lot of things there about being on mute, not being audio. That's why we do these checks first thing. All right, let me just double check if you guys can hear my voice. If you can see me, go ahead and shoot that into the chat box. Let's confirm this is working before we go any farther. Let me change that background a little bit. I like that one better. All right, so I was just seeing stuff about no sound right now, and there's just a small lag. So if you guys can hear my voice, if you can see my screen, let's get that in the chat box. We'll confirm we got audio visual working, and then we'll keep moving on. Let's see here. Switch your mic on. Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, I'm there. Looks like you guys can hear me now. Good now. All good now. Yes, it is. Okay, okay, okay. Awesome. All right, guys, let's get started today. It's, uh, it's is the Corbs Live live stream. Thanks for being out. Got a really great stream in for, uh, in for you guys today. Uh, let's see who's in the building real quick, and then we'll get jumping in. We got uh, Alexandro in the building. Great first name. Glad to have you on there. Artivan, what's up, brother? Steve, hey, Max, Steve, Steve, Leonardo, Nathan E. Gene, welcome, welcome, welcome. Who else we got in the building, guys? You guys are here. Don't be shy. Jump in. Say hi. Go ahead and get the used to saying something. Mac, what's up, brother? Welcome, welcome. Good to see all you guys here. Vincent, always good to see you. Thanks for the check. Quentin, hello, hello, hello. Ron, Alexandro again. All right, Alf, all you guys. Great. Awesome. Good to see all you. If you haven't jumped in there yet, say hi. We'll keep moving on. Listen, I said this earlier, guys, but it's a great day to be alive. It's a really good day to be a trader. And what we get to do uh, as coming into these markets, sitting down and trading, what this can provide for us and this opportunity, it is almost unbelievable. And the only way that we get to stay here and that we get to keep doing this is if we earn. When we stop earning or if you are not able to earn, this environment will be very unfavorable to you and you need to go back and work for somebody else. And so who do we have in the building today for earners? I know there's some out there. We had some uh, some really good things happening this morning. I know Matt put up close to 20 points. We have Martin putting up uh, over 15 points. Tell me something good, guys. Who else has been earning this morning? Shoot, shoot that into the chat box that needs to be a part of the conversation. Let's hear what channel are you using? It's really choppy, feels like. Uh, let's see if anybody else can confirm that. Might just be on one side. We should be going through YouTube. Should be going through Facebook. YouTube's always better in terms of quality. Let's see here. Here and ready to learn. Love that. All right, guys. There's no earners in the building. Hopefully you're just being shy. And if you're not earning, then stick with this channel. We're going to talk about some really good stuff today. What we're doing here is we are building a six-figure business, a six-figure trading business from scratch. That's the whole purpose of having these live streams. That's, that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're talking about. We're doing a small account live case study. And then we're building this thing up. And then as we build it, we're talking about what it takes to build this and, and all the real life issues that we're having along the way. We're going to be getting there, okay? So let's see here. Sound is solid. Caught the bottom of the NQ. Nice, nice, nice. Five points. Boom. Love that. You're ready to earn. See you. Leonardo. Profit target already. Love it. Awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on, guys. Uh, what we're going to do is let's jump in. We're going to start this stream off by doing a little bit of post analysis for the morning part of the session. want to talk about what shaped up, why it shaped up and uh, what we did to execute on this. We want to just kind of, we'll use that to update how the small account is going. Then I want to transition today. And I got a topic I want to cover with you guys uh, based around executional and order performance. When you're into a trade, how we're executing specifically on the uh, stop loss side of this. Okay. And if you've ever been in a position where you feel like your stops are getting run, or if you feel like you put a hard stop in and it kind of gets targeted, before the trade ends up working out, or you feel like you have a trouble where to get out of your trades, I really want to talk about some things today that are going to help uh, and that should help give some clarity on what we're doing here. Uh, what I'm doing, what I'm doing with this small account, what you should be focusing on, and then we'll have like a really good Q&A portion to, to make sure that there's no issues with this and that you guys really get something that you can start applying to your trades right now, which will just bump your bump your results through the roof. Okay, so it's a really great topic. We'll jump in. We'll cover that. All right, got some more uh, earners in the building. Love that, love that. All right, cool. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump in and uh, let's make these charts bigger. Let's go ahead and zoom me out a little bit. And let's look at, we're looking at the S&P 500. This is the ES. Okay, what uh, we're doing for this small account challenge is we are starting with the micro contract. But one important distinction we made early on is we are doing all of our charting on the full size contract. So I want to I pause here and use a, 
quick example of why this is important. If we look at this yesterday, we have a key level here uh, that would be this pink line. This is the point of control from the previous session. If volume profile jargon means nothing to you, this doesn't matter because this isn't volume profile specific right now, but the context of having a key level, if you are charting on the micro contract and it's going to be different in almost all cases on the full size. So here we have here, uh, a key level is right there at the 3017. If you guys can see this, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Let me know if that's easier for you guys to see. I'll bring this back to here. Okay, so this is a key level, but this is, uh, this is not where that level actually is, okay? If we look at this from a full size, this is no longer the micro, this is the full size contract. That same exact trade or that same exact level is not down here at the 3017, it's up here at the 3019. That two points difference might not seem like a lot, but we're talking about knowing where our important levels to get in or to get out of are. And if you are trying to grow a small account using the micro contract, like we're doing specifically right here on this stream, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you are trading off of the micro contract because that's where your risk parameters are gonna be safe. But you wanna make sure that you are charting on the full size contract. Okay. So now that that distinction is made, let's go ahead and Oh my goodness. I thought I lost you guys. All right. Sorry. I paused for a second. I thought I lost the audio. Um, all right. So now that we've covered that, just that little tidbit there, let's talk about today. What exactly happened versus what we were expecting. Uh, let, let's do a little post-market analysis here. This is the S and P 500. This was our primary ideas for the day right here. This was our analysis and this is what we were looking for. So here we have our primary idea, which was to chop and drop on the open before finding a base and pushing higher on the day. We had some very specific reasons why we were looking for this. We had our trigger areas for support and then our resistance areas on the way up. These were uh, where we were gonna look to enter for our long position, where we were gonna look to take profits, because uh, these are some very, very key levels above. Okay, this was a secondary idea. The first idea is what ended up playing out. And so that's what happened. We were looking, we came in today and we were looking for an entry into this area right in here. And then we were looking to take this back up to new heights. What we ended up getting today uh, was a really drastic drop to the downside that really caught me out. Okay, but if you guys can look at this chart, you'll see, and if you're familiar with this, this is the, uh, the naked uh, tractor beam trade has set up. I've, I've done a whole YouTube video on this where I talk about it. This is a very high quality trade. And if you ever, just as I, as I say that, if you don't know what a high quality setup is um, for your personal trading, you're going to have a lot of frustrations that shouldn't be there, but they, 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 uh, they, they surface because you don't really know what it is that is good. And so you kind of just see everything and it causes a lot of frustrations that shouldn't be there. So if you want an example of like what a good, just high quality setup looks like, what the rules are, how you should be thinking about that, you can go check out that video. It deals with the naked tractor beam. Uh, this is what we have shaping up where the ES opened up. We reverted down before we popped back up and tagged this point of control. I won't go over this setup here. It's very high quality. This is what shaped up today. Okay. Let me pull up our actual micro contract so that we can, uh, I want to walk through the actual executions on this. Yeah, that'll be nice. Okay. Let's see if you guys can see this. I think this will be perfect. Okay. So what we had going on today, let's walk through some of these trades and we'll see kind of how we ended up on the morning. Uh, what we ended up here on this day is we put up right around $40 on the, the small account that we're doing. Um, and leading up to this, we got absolutely blasted out of our position and the, the market almost took us to max stop loss. Uh, we really had to go to war today and get our way out of this, but let's walk through what ended up happening. So primary idea was that we would, we would open up in range and value. We would drop down, find a base, and then continue higher. We came down, and this is exactly what happened. This first drop down took us right into the 08 to 05 area. This is our key level for where we wanted to enter. 
we pulled the trigger and entered in. Now, this is the first several minutes of the day. This is an incredibly difficult time to just commit large size. So we cut this down. We entered this trade in with just two contracts. We have the availability to use more of these micros with our risk parameter, but we can't treat every trade the same. It's a high quality setup. It's the first rotation down of the day. We got to be careful. We take this trade. It rotates up and goes right to about the mid of that move, mid of the day so far, right to VWAP. This is a great area for this trade to fail and for the idea to be wrong. So we enter, we, the market pops up, gives us a little bit of green. We secure some of that profit. We got two contracts on, we take one off. The market drops back down right to our original entry. The trade's still working, the trade's still valid, nothing's changed yet. I load back up for the original size. All right, so now we're back in for the same size here, two contracts right in here. And then the market drops down. This drop down just ends up flushing. And if you watch this in real time, it was just this ugly kind of beating down that had no mercy to the upside. Now, I, I hardly ever get in this early in the day, start committing size. I'm always waiting for something to shape up. But we had a very specific thing we were looking for, and it shaped up very early on. It, it gave us an opportunity where we might miss this if we don't jump on board. So we went ahead and got involved very early. Normally, we don't do this. Uh, what ended up happening is the market just would not let up. And it came down as far as I could let this go. Very high quality setup. So I've, I'm almost okay letting this go much farther than other trades. It didn't work out. I had to take this trade off and take the full size exit down in here. The reason down in here is we had a very key high volume area above that that failed. Once that level gave out, I exited the trade and cut my losses. What we did from there is we dropped down to test the previous low of day. This, this is crazy. We're opening up in a lot of balance here. Everything's fine, but the market is just getting crushed to the downside. It's very, very strange. Uh, so what ended up happening is we still looking for that primary idea, looking at this as just being manipulation. Like We're not opening up and just going to trend lower all day. This was still my primary idea. So what happens, we took one more attempt at this uh, right in here. Same thing. It didn't work out. And right on this attempt, if you guys can see, we got long. This was our, 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 our last attempt here. The trade took off and it worked out beautifully. All right. So I kind of want to see, uh, I'll show you these levels in a second, but let's look how this played out. And then we'll see the key levels on the actual ES contract so we can see how this played out. But we entered it on this trade here. It moved up kind of that same thing, right up against a key level, right up against VWAP as well. So we took something off to secure some profit. And then we held the rest of this for the distance. The distance being that uh, we wanted to see that the naked point of control from yesterday get tagged. This was the setup. So we took the rest of that all the way through to get tagged into there. Okay. This ended up being an extremely beautiful trade where you're flat on this position. The market chopped around for a little bit. We popped higher. It gave us one more opportunity to enter long. We squeezed out the rest of this, scaled twice, uh, scaled at the 33, and then we exited out for the day. So these are the trades that we took. The, the main one I want to drill in is that one, uh, the first one that we took that did not work out for us. And we want to see what exactly that happened, how we managed that, and, and what the deal was there, okay? So it'll be more helpful to see it on this chart here. This will have all of our key levels on it. This was the zone we wanted to see happen this morning. It started working very beautifully. Then it failed very hard. Uh, what you can see here, and this is some of the raw power of having uh, the volume profile and these levels to lean against. You can see what happened. We came down, tested this very key level. We flushed it out. Okay, We, we held it, tested below it, immediately took it back and held again. So very key level here, flushed it out, clearly didn't like those lower prices. This gave us the ability to enter in um, for this, this kind of last attempt, the last attempt here that we made on this hold held beautifully. And this trade worked out very, very nice. Now, the trade ended up working out fairly OK, but the way that this shaped up was extremely tough, really difficult, went way farther down than I would have expected uh, and really blasted me out on the way down to where this almost took us. It took us down about 170 bucks. Uh, taking us in the realm of max stop loss on the day, first thing in the morning. And then what we had to do was not get crazy, not get overly aggressive. When this trade happened here, I still only put two contracts on, risk above everything here. But we really had to go to war and we really had to fight our way out of this thing. And uh, this wasn't the time to shy back. This was the time to really build some teeth 
and lean in on something high quality and let it go out. Okay. Not out of fear, not out of greed, but just let these things happen. Take our profits. Same thing. Just taking our profits. Okay. So we were able to get out of that hole, uh, a beautiful trade that should have taken us right to profit target. The way it shaped up and the way I executed it, it put me in a very big hole first, but we got out of it. We fought our way out. And that's where we, uh, that's kind of where we ended on the day. The primary idea worked out. It worked out in a tough, tough way that I didn't see coming, but we were still able to pull something out of this. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, I know several of you did quite a bit better, not getting in so early, uh, they ended up being an error on that first initial trade there. Okay. So let me know if you guys have any questions about how this day shaped up or any of those specific executions that we did. I think it's very nice um, to, to be able to see some of these, see something that just goes terribly wrong at first and then see where it gives you that second opportunity to still get in on there um, and kind of see the control of not getting crazy. I don't have anything to prove here. We're not trying to swing for a home run and get back everything lost. We're not throwing on way more size than we need to, right? We're staying here. We're doing it. Uh, bada boom, bada bing. All right. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Du, 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 du. Not seeing any questions coming through from everybody. So I'm guessing y'all are just listening and following right along. And that's great if I'm doing a good job of explaining it. But if you have any questions, uh, let's let's get those in. Okay. Let's see here, Steve. Uh, yeah, let's get this one first. 1.5 range, yes. Steve, why? What is the 306 level? This 306 in here, uh, if this is what you're referring to, this is between 308 and 305. 305 was the overnight mid, the mid of the overnight session. We have some, some key reasons for that being an important level. And then the 308 is uh, right in line with where we closed the previous day. So kind of this like three point range of where we closed the previous session and the overnight mid. Uh, it, was a, it was a nice area to get to, kind of find some support and then move higher. And if you actually look at this, what shaped up today? And I'm, I'm not a fan of like calling excuses or oh, this is, but this is what happened. The market opened and you can see once we just flushed everything out and came back, we respected this area very well. And what it did is this is a, a really a form of manipulation where we open and just shoot everything out before we do ultimately what we're going to do, okay? Um, and so this, this idea was valid, it worked out, but the market just worked me over before it happened. Uh, but we still, you know, whatever, we still made money from this. And this is an important thing we need to talk about today is when we, when we talk about the actual topic here, um, but whether you know this or not, or whether you understand this or not, when you sit down at your screens and you wanna enter into a trade, you are stepping into a financial warfare. And if you think that everything should be fair or easy or that, uh, that, that stuff's not going to be difficult here, you don't understand what you're doing. You don't understand what we're operating in. And uh, this is going to cause us to, to, for people not to play fair, for things to be manipulated. And we got to step up and we got we to be able to operate within that as well. And we got to you know, be able to fight back. The, when this all happened down in here, we were bumping up against stop loss. The, the market had me on the ground getting ready to take my uh, you know, metaphorical life here. And we had to fight that back and get that back. That's part of what we need to do, all right? So, but anyway, that's what that level was. And I think that's an important thing, all right? So can you talk about key levels? Yeah, key levels. I actually, I want to spend a little time talking about this when we get to the past to this like post analysis and talk about the actual topic of the day. But um, all of these key levels are, I will say, you know, 90% of all my levels, they come from a volume profile. Uh, com uh, they come from volume profiling, okay? So here is a higher time frame profile. I know this looks extremely messy. The only thing we really need to focus on are levels that are you know close to us. <clears throat> so these ones right in here kind of, but uh, without getting too much, cause this will be a very different topic, but all those levels that are marked on those charts we were looking at, those are all volume profile related levels. Very, uh, yeah, all of these right here are all, all coming from that, all right? Let's see here, uh, Mac, at what point in entries do you consider price structure? Normally, Mac, I'm putting a lot more emphasis on price structure. Uh, the way that this set up this morning, it, I, it was an error for me to be that aggressive early on. There wasn't a lot to support it, and I let that go farther than it should have. Um, it ended up, it, it was 
kind of unique because it's such a high quality trade. This scenario is going to work out, uh, you know, past performance, not indicative of future results, but it plays out well over 90% of the time, very high quality. And so in that context, I gave it more room than I normally would give other things because we, we can't tra treat every trade equally. Some trades are higher quality than others, and we need to be able to, uh, you know, do that uh, apparently. Okay. Let's hear, Eric, you said you got close to the daily max stop loss. Do you use hard stops on your entries? Eric, really great question. The topic we're going to talk about in just a minute is stops and uh, whether we use discretionary or hard, what we should be focusing on. So let's save that for right there. Let's see here. And the reason for your bias, uh, Chendu, really great question. That's a little more complicated. I can't cover that right now. Uh, it, it just comes into having a top step down approach for analyzing what the market is doing and, and building out ideas of what's most likely to happen next based on some edges. Okay, it's it's not nearly as complicated as what I just made it sound or what that meant, what I said, but it is uh, just specific. It's a specialized type of knowledge that's not complicated, but it's um, it's I can't just do it justice by just going over it. Okay, uh, engine. I took the day, I took the prior day value area break and target prior day volume point of control, but I could not hold it because the delta was negative. I closed five points, but the trade was not. Uh, but the but the trade was perfect textbook. Yeah. All right. Did you take that because of the naked point of control video or the naked uh, tractor beam video? I'd be interested to know that or not. Cause yeah, it's, it's one of the, one of my, you know, setups I've shared with everybody and it's that, that trade will make, will help you earn. Let's see here. The opening sell-off was a continuation of the overnight move into the cash open. Do you use overnight as context? Yeah, hundred percent. I do. And given the context of that overnight, kind of that directional slow that we had, the drift coming into the morning or that drop down that was coming into the open, the idea that we would open up in range and value like this and then just puke like that, uh, to me, that wasn't likely. I wasn't anticipating it, but it happened. All right. But yeah, definitely use overnight. Overnight context is very important to me. Thrift, do you trade live every day? Joe, audio. That might just be on your side, Joe. I don't think anybody else struggling with that. Let's hear. Uh, da, 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 Giorgetto, why didn't you cut your loss faster slash earlier? Why wait so long? Really good question. Okay, so here's the deal. This was our kind of key level right in here that I was looking to get in on. We got in right there. This trade is very high quality that I would almost risk my full daily stop loss to let this happen because I know how likely this is to, to go on. We, we don't do that with very many trades. Uh, and you'll see some of this, you know, this other attempt in here and what would have been this attempt, those got cut very quickly. And the reason being is because it was a different, you know, kind of form of context once this day was giving out. But up in here, this was still valid. I was in a tough situation where below this zone I wanted to get in on, just a few points below us, we had the value area low from the previous day. Just a few points below that, very close, we had this key HVN. Uh, and so what's happening here, is this trade was getting squeezed down and I was trying to hold in and not let this just chop me out. And we kept having these key levels right below that was like, okay, listen, we're good. We're here. If this level holds, this trade is still valid. Okay. This is giving out, but right underneath it, we have another key level. And the only reason I did not take this trade off is because I have, I, I would have been fine even holding through all of this to let that happen. The reason I had to take this off is because I have very strict risk parameters for this small account. So I gave it as much room as I could. And then once this last level gave out here, uh, I had to take that trade off because I, I couldn't sit there and hold anymore on that trade. Uh, it took me all the way to the max of what I could give it and I had to take it off. That's the only reason I did. But normally I'm a much bigger fan of, listen, if this level is not holding, get out and look for the next trade. But understand this was also the first rotation down of the day. Uh, and so I was I was letting this, have its first rotation up and it just never came. Never, never came. Let's hear. Can you go over why we were so uh, why you were so aggressive at the beginning of the day and why this was a high quality setup? Yeah. Listen, I have a whole video explaining this setup, but the this the the situation that ended up happening with this rally here uh, in this context happens a very high percentage of the time. And so it wasn't me just blindly being aggressive at the very open. I had a real specific reason for doing it. And uh, the market made it really tough, you know, to play it out. But there's a whole video about it. So go check that out if you like. Yes. Yeah, I love that. It's awesome. 
let's see here. Are you on YouTube live? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's just for Trade Act members. The, uh, the we traded all this live this morning, but it's uh, it's it's not on a public YouTube channel. Let's see here. Corbs, uh, can you said that when the price hit value area high, you short? When the price hits ver- value area low, you get long. Uh, no, not always. I don't blindly do that at all. You'll get in a lot of trouble. Where is the point of control level on your chart uh, currently? Previous was the 3019. Currently, it's up here at the high of day. Uh, the exact is the 2775. 30, 27. 75 for the s p 500 september contract okay all right great i think we got through all of that let's go ahead and move on we got a really uh kind of great topic that i just want to go through with you guys on now that we've covered this and uh kind of recapped where we're at with the challenge here uh looking at today we got another session here okay so we we trade the morning once we start getting past at 11 30 we come into 12 1 1 30 uh it's a really in my opinion, low quality time to be on the charts. I avoid it completely. Trade the mornings. We take a break. I come back in the, you know, for, for an hour or so in the evening, we look for that other high quality time to be in front. So we're not at profit target because of how that shaped up this morning and how I did it. Uh, so, but we're going to have another option here towards the end of the day. Hopefully we'll get profit target, but we're, you know, we'll have to come back and put some more work in today. Hopefully we'll get that. Okay. Now, uh, moving on a little bit here, I want to talk about um, an actual topic dealing with building up this small account. And what we're we're talking about here is putting in your stops. Uh, this is going to be a form of management of your trades and, and order execution. But when you are putting on a trade, okay, where you are getting out and how you choose to get out, what specific medium you're using here is going to be really important. I know there's a lot of questions about this. And if you've ever been in a position, let's just use a really relevant live example from today. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. This would be even better. If you've ever been in this position, let's talk about a couple of things of how we deal with this, okay? Clean this up a little bit. Let's say, uh, actually, I want to leave these key levels on here. <clears throat> okay, uh, so here's a, here's a situation, if you've ever been in this, where, listen, we drop down, this whole thing comes down. It comes down to, let's say, for whatever reason, this is a key level for you. We chop around, we come back, and we hold that level. This level that you want to see it, you get in at is, is holding. So you decide to get long and to take this back up, and we're at the 9150 right now, let's just say. So you're like, okay, I'm going to give this a few points of wiggle room. Let's say I'll, I'll give this down to the 89. Uh, we're at the 9150. I'll give this a few points of wiggle room here. If we hit the 89, I'm going to get out, but looking for this level to hold. So you're kind of sitting in there, the trade's working out. You're a few points up on the trade. Uh, looks like it's happening. And then boom, it flushes down. And even as you kind of see how these bars are reacting, you can see that, I guess, well, actually the way I'm skipping, you can't, but in real time, this happens a lot more aggressively than, than these moves in here. Boom. We just drop right down. Okay, you had your or- you had your orders at the 89. They were resting right there. The market came down, flushed out your orders, and then uh, it proceeds to just continue to work out. Right, so uh, it just takes off, goes to your profit target. You have to sit there and watch it take off. If you've ever been in this situation, it's incredibly frustrating, and it's very easy to think that when you put in an order, like a stop, that it's resting in the book, that it's being targeted, that it's being hunted, that when you put it in there, it's just you're getting taken advantage of and then the the trades work, work anyway and that you've just kind of been a victim of some manipulation all right so what i want to talk about is um should you be using those hard stops do i use those hard stops or should it be more discretionary what's kind of some criteria here because this is this will be really really important okay um and if you apply this it, it's going to do wonders for your trading results instantly all right so let's talk about it what we're talking about here uh if I had to put a title to this would be why I don't use hard stops, but you probably should. All right. So let's kind of walk through, because I know this is what happens. You experience a lot of situations like this, and it kind of turns you off to the idea of protecting yourself with a hard stop. And so what you end up doing is not wanting to use a hard stop, maybe doing something more discretionary, but that can really put you in a position where you take on way more damage than you need to. And on a on it opens you up for the possibility of some really 
bad trades happening that wouldn't happen if you did use your hard stops. Okay. We also, so I want to talk about that. I really want to talk about as well, uh, where you should be putting these stops because in this situation right here, it's easy to look at this and to think that this just ran your stop and you got manipulated. But if you can understand how the market actually works and what it's doing, you would look at this as a very orderly and natural thing for this turnaround. And when I re-entered in on this, uh, I, I want to walk through my thought process because it'll, it'll, it will really help in just kind of understanding what the differences are here. Okay. So if you guys are, uh, let's see here, boom, 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 boom. make sure you guys are still with me. Give me some love here. Let's, uh, let's keep the chat going. Make sure any kind of questions you have, you put those in. I don't want to lose you guys with this because we're getting really talk about a really important topic and give me some love. There's about 65 people or so, I think total in the room. There's three likes. What's up with that? All right. As we're moving on this topic, go ahead. Give me some love on the, the likes, the comments. Let's uh, keep active here because this gets really dry if I'm just talking to myself. Okay. Um, all right. So here's the deal. I do not use hard stops. When we're doing this right here, all my trades are managed on this depth of market. So when I go to enter a position, uh, if I'm getting long, I'm hitting here. If I'm getting short, I'm hitting here. And uh, I'm putting these orders in. Now, when I'm filled and when I'm into a trade, I do not automatically go in and set a hard stop that if the market gets down to here, I'm going to exit. I will use what's called a discretionary stop where I know where the trade has failed and I need to get out, but I don't put that in ahead of time. Okay. Now what you don't want to do, and you need to kind of stay in here. Let me explain why I don't do it because there's a very good chance that you need to be doing it. Uh, and, and if you're not able to do it, or if you don't do it, you're going to take a lot of damage. The reason that I don't do it is kind of twofold. One is I know that that is all public information. So if I come down here and I set an order in the books, that is not private. That is out there. Okay. And if you ever feel like maybe somebody knows where your orders are, they do like a hundred percent. That information is out there. That is available. At the end of the day, nobody cares about my size. Nobody cares about your size. So I'm overthinking that, but I know that's happening. So it's in the back of my mind. The reason that I do not do it though, is because I know the difference almost all the time uh, when a trade is dropping down to kind of flush people out or to test or when something is wrong and the market is dropping and I need to hit the bail button. Being able to know that difference is something you can't know ahead of time. You have to be able to see it in real time. And when I'm up against the hard right edge of the screen and something like this happens, I know that that is just a test before this thing is coming back. I, I know it. And so I wait for it. I still have certain rules that I follow, but this to me is something that I can, I can see happen. I also know when this is, when something like this happens and something's wrong, that, that size has stepped in news is out that hasn't hit my wire yet. Something's gone different and I need to protect myself. I need to bail. I need to, I need to get out. Right. But here's the thing. If you do not know that difference, OK, and if you are not able to, to tell that you're opening yourself up for an absolute world of hurt. And so for you not to put a hard stop in, you're going to be much better learning where the intelligent places are to put those hard stops uh, and then just sticking with them. Because taking even five of those annoying stop outs is going to be so much better than letting one trade just really get away from you. All right. So as we talk about this, talk to me about any questions or comments you guys have, because this is going to be a really important topic. Now, uh, when I say I can know the difference between it, this isn't something we can just talk about. This has to be something you learn. And there is a certain element of uh, intuitive knowledge about what we do in a skill set, right? If you are a firefighter and you walk into a burning building to be able to know that this building is getting ready to collapse and I have to get out right now. That's an intuitive sense of your skill. And that, that comes from being on the force for years and being inside of that fire uh, environment time and time and time again. That's not something you just pick up on instantly. And so for me, I've watched the ES, I've watched the products that I'm trading so much for so long that I know when certain things are. And if you don't have that built up and, and probably in almost all cases, you don't, which is fine. That's, that's no reflection on your intelligence. That's no reflection on you as a person. It's just something that has to be built. And if you're not there, you should be using hard stops. 
entering to a trade, knowing where it's wrong and putting the hard stop in. Okay. Let's see here. Corbs, you don't talk to yourself. We listen too carefully. Oh, you guys are all busy taking notes. Very good. All right. Good. All of you who wrote down, Corb said, hit the like button and didn't do it. Go ahead and hit the like button while you're at it. I see six of you joined the party. Welcome. Thank you. Let's see here. Vincent, you're still here in the building. Awesome. 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 Let's see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Wrong is wrong. Get out. And yeah. Okay. Listen, this is what we're talking about. How do you know when it's wrong? And if you don't have the ability to know that, and I'm telling you, it is difficult in real time up against the hard right edge of that screen. It's very difficult. And if you can't, you just need to use some hard stops. Okay. Let's see here. Are you going to do a live volume profile in trading view so we can interact and ask questions as well? Definitely not trading view. Uh, maybe do some live here, but not in trading view for sure. Right back at you. Okay. So let's talk about you and uh, using stops. I'm going to assume for the, the majority of all of us should be using hard stops. And what we want to talk about is uh, manipulation. It, it, is your stops getting run out? If you're putting stops in, are you putting yourself just at danger of getting, you know, triggered and and getting taken advantage of? Because I know this happens so much. I was just talking with a trader yesterday, or maybe it was um, maybe it was Saturday, but about this same thing. And he was saying, I know that they see my stops, and I know that they're getting run, and I know that they're getting triggered. Okay. So first of all, I've already said this. Yes, that happens in certain markets. It happens a lot more. And one reason why I'm a big fan of a product like futures and trading something like the ES and why I make the statement that you're only going to be as good as the products that you trade is because there are certain things that are pitted against you if you don't know. And there are certain markets you can be involved in where the broker will literally trade against you. And it's very rigged. Uh, that's not the, that's more of, you know, the, the, uh, that's, that's not co that common, but that, that actually it's, uh, <laughs> That happens a lot. Actually, I shouldn't say it's not common. That does happen a lot. But there are a lot of outlets where it doesn't happen. Okay. And even in outlets where your broker is not directly going to trade against you, that information is still for sale and it is out there. And the, the process of how this works is they understand and people know where there are just bulks of orders and where there are stops placed. Okay. So that happens. Going back to what I said earlier, we are in a financial warfare here. So if you want to sit back and just complain about that, or if you want to just say that that's not fair, yeah, it's not fair. And nobody said that this should be fair. And, and you're going to have to develop some teeth. And instead of complaining about things, we got to learn how to operate above them, how to pick our battles more wisely, and how to avoid these kind of things, because it will always happen. To some degree, there's always going to be some manipulation or some predatory algo activity. Uh, we're, not going to, we're not going to turn that off. So let's learn how to develop some skills around just getting caught up in all of the nasty noise. Because I can tell you this right here. If you've been in this situation we walked through, this was not market manipulation. This was not predatory algos. This was not uh, the market flushing people out just to screw everybody over. All right. Let's understand and let's get this straight. The market, the, what we're doing here on an exchange, something like the S&P 500 that's moving up and down and doing all of its thing. This is a giant auction. We are trying to match together buyers and sellers. And so what we need to understand is if we can kind of take the mysticism out of this and just look at this practically, right? Whether or not this is a manipulated move or whether or not this is a genuinely down strong move, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. There was interest to the downside. And if you can picture us, if we are at an auction block, and the, 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 the auctioneer is sitting there offering prices and nobody is interested in buying it, he's going to keep dropping the price until there is interest. And so as this product is just dropping down like this, we finally reach a level that is significant where people are interested. We hit that level. You can see the interest starts building up here. And then there's like a final kind of test down just to, you know, we're making sure we're, we're this is the level. We're kind of dropping below it just to make sure or just to see if there's any interest down here. There isn't any. We reject those prices and then the market continues up in the direction it wants to go. Do you see how that thought process is different? This gave me the ability when this happened not to feel like, oh, this drop down just screwed me over, but to realize this drop down did screw me over. But now we're ready to start turning around 
And I was able to get back on this and get back everything that was taken from me. Uh, the difference between sitting back and saying the market just screwed me over, poor me, or staying in the game, keeping the context, keeping your head together and taking advantage of it. This is what separates. This is what separates uh, traders that can consistently pull money from the markets and traders who can't. It's not just a trick or a secret or a tip or a magic tool. It's traders that have learned to pull money out of the market. They see things differently. They look at things differently. They believe different things about the market. They don't get caught up in this noise where this happens and they say, oh, the market just screwed me over. They get right back in. And they take advantage of the move. Okay. So really important distinction to make in there. Now, when you're setting in your stops, if you were to put something in like what we talked about, that's not the market screwing you over. That's you doing something very low quality. And the market is, and you're not being rewarded by the market for it. Okay. So what we can do for our hard stops, we've already talked about the fact you should be using them. Use your hard stops. Don't let those get away from you. Now, let me briefly go over this because I, I don't know why, but I've, uh, I've taken so much time to explain this. This was supposed to be a quicker topic. I'm not sure what happened. You, you know what it was? All you guys with the not giving me likes made me, that was a distraction that took up several seconds. And look, we're still talking about it. If you guys would have just gave me my likes, we would have been going on. All right. All right. All right. Good talk. Uh, let's talk about very practically though. Cause I, I said at the very beginning of this stream, the only thing that matters is that we earn. If we're not earning the market fires us, we go back and we have to do something else. We have to earn. Uh, it needs to be a very strong priority. So in terms of let's talk about earning and talk about where we should be setting these stops and how you should be interacting with this. Okay. Uh, first things first, when you are entering the market, before you can understand where you should be putting your stop is you need to have the ability to understand where a quality level is. If the market is dropping down and it's just, it's heading in a direction, it's not going to just stop going down unless it reaches some area of support. If the market is heading up, it's not going to stop going up unless it reaches some level of resistance. And one of the best things you can do to stop getting low quality chop outs of your trades is just make sure that when you enter into a trade, you have an actual level that you're leaning against. I, I get these key levels, or let me ask you guys, what exactly is a key level? When I say that, like you need to make sure when you enter a trade, it's at a key level. What is a key level? What is a high quality level? What is a important level to you? Fire that in the chat box and let's talk about this because I want to hear what you guys think about this. And if I say that, quality level, key level, and you don't know what that is, throw that in there too, because we'll talk about this. And I need to know if you guys know this or not, because uh, just by stop stopping the process of entering trades at random places, literally the quality of your P&L and your trade is going hit to the, hit the roof. It'll, it'll change everything. And if you look back at a lot of the dumb trades you take or a lot of the bad days you have, if you really analyze those trades, you realize you were just kind of getting in it wherever, getting caught up in the noise. It looks like it's going to do this. I think it's doing that. And you just enter. And if you can switch that around to where whatever's happening is happening, but if you're not up against a key level, you just don't enter the market. Uh, everything's going to get better. And then by virtue of just tightening up that, a lot of these low quality exits aren't going to happen. Okay. Da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see. Are you sure you're a good trader? You have thin skin. I don't have any response to that. It's not true. This market literally took me almost a stop loss. I got right back in and took it all back from the market. So let's see here. 50 day. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Low of day, low of day. LVN. The level is tested repeatedly. You got the 50 day, the last point of control. Yep. Low of day. Bye. Or a sarcastic sense of humor. Okay, cool. All right, so listen, yeah, these are just some uh, some ideas here. And there wasn't a right or wrong answer because if you are using any type of a trading system, your trading system is trying to identify key levels of support and resistance. That's literally it. If you are uh, doing a Fibonacci, right? If you are entering in at an Elliott wave count, if you are entering in because um, if this is oversold or overbought or because this line crossed this line, or if you're entering in at an LVN or an HVN, 
All of these things, they are, if you want to keep it simple, they're designed to tell us and to help us understand that we've reached a potential area of support or resistance. Okay. And so for me, I use LVNs, I use HVNs, uh, some things like previous low of days, previous high of days, all of those are excellent, right? These are just key levels that we're talking about. And so one thing you'll need to get right is what exactly are your key levels? Because if you're not getting in at a key level, you're, you're, um, you're, you're setting yourself up to probably get chopped out of a lot of trades that you just at the end of the day should have never been in. So here's a good example. This is an LVN. This is what we took today. All right. We came down, we tested this level, we broke through it, we held it entering in at a key level uh, and being able to take this trade off. Now, in terms of when we when to understand if or where you should be putting your stops on this, the next thing is once you once you understand that you are in at a key level, because if you're not in a key level, it's very hard to know where to put your stop. Where you put your stop is when that level does not hold. Okay, if you enter into a trade because we're holding this key level, if that key level breaks and it doesn't hold, then you need to get out of the trade because the very reason you entered is no longer valid. You're you're entering because this trade held. If the level didn't hold, that trade is no longer valid. You need to be getting out. So, what does that mean and and how do we understand that? Because listen, it looks like this level didn't hold, but it actually did. So how do you know when a level is holding or when a level isn't holding? One of the models that we need to use for our trading is we need to start off working on nothing but skill development. And when we're working on skill development, we have a very narrow focus of just a few products that we watch, very dialed in. We have just a few high quality setups that we want to start tracking and trading. And then as we get a high level of competence and we start making money, we can move on from skill to using size where we don't change anything, but we just use more and more of what we're doing. And then once we have that metric and we're actually hitting profit target and, and reaching some goals, we can move on to stretching where we include other markets, other systems, things like that. But it needs to happen in that order. Here's the reason. When to know if something is holding or whether it's not, we're not landing a, a rocket ship here. So we can't expect that things are going to be perfect every time. So how in the world do you know if a level is actually holding or if it's not? This is going to come down to a very big function of your competence with the product that you're trading. You get really spread out over a bunch of different products. And I'm telling you, there's no way you're going to be able to know whether or not this level gave out or not. You get really dialed in and specific. You'll be able to understand this. Because if, if a move happens on the ES, this to me is a perfect hold. This is not manipulation. This is a perfect hold, test below, pull back and uh, you know test it, break through, not accept those prices and hold, textbook. But this would look very different on something like the um, NASDAQ. This would look very different than something on the uh, like crude oil. Those products move very differently. And so on something like crude oil, a move that's pretty normal over there would be something's very wrong on the ES. Do you understand? Like those, those are differences. And for me to tell you those differences, it's not just this like one textbook cookie, cookie cutter answer. It's really going through the process of getting comfortable and building skill with the products that you're trading. So what you need to understand so that you can put intelligent stops is how the product you're trading moves. What is a normal move? What is an average rotation when it is going somewhere, right? How is this a, a liquid product that just slips through prices with no problem? Is this a thicker product that hits areas and chops around and grinds through? These are things that we need to know before we sit down and we just start blasting through trades and putting stops in places that are, that are somewhat arbitrary. Because if you treat your stops the same way that you would treat them on the uh, NQ or on the crude oil, as you would on the ES, it's going to be a mess. It's just going to be an absolute, absolute mess. Okay. So that was a lot of generality there. Let's talk about some specifics. Uh, the main takeaway here, and you guys shoot me anything so we can talk about this. The main takeaway from this is, listen, uh, if you're getting stopped out a lot, first of all, go down to the root of that cause. Where are you entering? There's a very good chance you're just entering in at a dumb place and you can't be mad when the market chops you out. Enter in at good levels only. If you don't know what a good level is, stop your trading for a little bit. 
get back, get some direction there and, and understand what exactly those key levels are. Once you're in that, okay, you need to be familiar with the product you're trading so that you understand that this is a normal move. It still is holding or this level is broke and it's not coming back. The way that you know that, and because there's, there's not one answer for every product, it's going to be different on every product you trade. So if you're out there spread around a little bit of foreign currencies, a little bit of futures, you also got your eyes on some stocks, just stop, like literally stop, focus in on one of those markets, a few of those products and, and get good. Okay. All right, guys, let's hear. We only got a few more minutes left. Let's crunch through some of these Q and A's and then we'll go. Let's see here. Round numbers. Still talking about all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see here. Corbs, do current and previous value areas work as levels? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, previous for sure. Current, you got to be careful because in the beginning of the day, that 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 profile is still getting developed. So the the earlier on the day, the less data we have, the less important that is. As the day shapes up, we get more, the, that value area gets more, um, that gets more real. Okay, because the value area can shift very easily as it's being developed. Okay. Let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Any market? Yep, yep, yep. Number one rule when something somebody is trying to teach you something, don't be a douche. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's see here. That is directed for you. You know who you are. I appreciate you having my back on that one. Uh, Bill. <laughs> Let's see here, Corbs. Uh, why not the MES for a $1,250 account? Okay, listen, stick with this channel, ma'am. Stick with this progress. We are trading the MES. We are charting on the full size. The reasons that this is important, it's real important, but we've covered all this like a bunch of times. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but yeah, real, real important. Da, 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 da. Market makers look for fresh money. Yeah, of course. That's, yep. Let's see here. Um, it's study you calculate the lower low and higher high on the one minute database as your average set. You can see the minute rotation points for the EES. For now, your minute stop must be boom. Okay, yeah, that's beautiful. Really good. Uh, what, what I was talking about, like understanding how your product moves. This is a good, good tip right here. Okay, there's like some very refined ways looking at rotations that we can get this down, but this is a beautiful way right here. Looking at a one minute data set and just getting an idea of what is an average move that you're going through. The market is being very volatile right now. So it's kind of spread on the ES between four points and eight points. That's probably like really, really accurate. So look at this comment because that you can run that through on whatever you're trading. Really nice comment. Hello. I agree. Let's see here. Uh, I would like to know where the fresh money is. Yeah. I mean, we won't, but is there any indicator of trading view that calculates this automatically? Uh, no. You just need the skill that pays the bills. There might be, I don't know. I probably wouldn't trust it if there was one. Is it better to trade a reaction to a key level like a pullback? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the best, this is the most beautiful thing that we can see as a trader, in my opinion. The level gets tested. We break it slightly before coming back and holding it. It's the greatest. And um, sometimes we don't always get that and we have to be intuitive to what that what that difference is. A good example would be later on in the day, we took a trade at, this retest right in here. Okay. This broke through. We came back and on this first retest. We entered and took it back up. Why did we do it that time? Okay. Contextually with as strong as this was moving, we were looking for this to be a little bit different, but, um, so it's not always going to be that nice for you, but the best thing that we can see is something like this. That's just beautiful. If if you're still kind of wondering about a lot of this, uh, you know, good entries, let your level get tested, probably let it get violated a little bit, look for it to move away from that level. And then on some type of a pullback, hit the trigger. Yes. Uh, specialize. Yes. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, for, see here. You used Sierra charts. Yep, I used, I use, I will use. You can get a zigzag indicator to help you understand. Yep, another excellent point. 
Uh, for the sake of these trainings, I've taken it off, but I have the zigzag on all of my trigger charts normally. Okay, I take it off for this because it gets extremely noisy looking and I don't want to confuse people, but that's another great suggestion engine coming out the gate swinging. Yeah, there's a lot. Okay, we're, we're going to go over that. Let's see. You're welcome. Let's see. Nathan, so you were trading the ME. Uh, so we are trading the MES, but charting on the ES. Yes, very important. The MES is going to give us different data because it's not that reliable. It's kind of weird. The, you know, the type of flows that happen there, they move in perfect harmony. They move in sync, but the levels will be slightly different, especially when the volatility picks up. So we're charting the ES trading off of the uh, MES until we can graduate into the full size here. Uh, when is it better to simp uh, what, let's see, what is the better simple way to check the resistance and support? Are they equal using volume profile or just the old school way uh, of reflection and pullback? Yeah, listen, this needs to be a part of your actual, uh, the system that you're using. So whatever your system is, um, it should be generating for you these key levels of support and resistance. So for me, if you're asking, it's the volume profile. It doesn't have to be that. Corbs, can you explain your daily stop limit and the 50% daily stop? Uh, yep, we've covered this in the, the, the last session. We talked about the risk parameters, okay? So my daily stop, uh, you guys can go back and watch this. And I pulled up the actual day plan. So it's printed there. You can read through all these details. Uh, but what this says is just that I basically have the ability to do eight points of heat of loss per every contract that I'm trading. That's kind of the, uh, the performance side of this. And then what will end up happening is I've given myself around 20% of the, um, of my account is my max daily stop loss. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that is a crazy, it's not crazy. That is a very aggressive max stop loss. And you cannot take me saying that and think that maybe that's a good idea for you necessarily. I know about me. I hit my max daily stop loss around one, maybe two times a month. It's pretty rare. So I can afford to keep it aggressive. I'm also in the plan. We're keeping it very aggressive early on. And as we grow the account, we're going to throttle back this risk a little bit, but we're using this now. So during these first few days and weeks, we're not spending the first two months to make 150 bucks, right? So we're, we're using this intelligently. Also, if you track it back to the actual structure we're using, we're starting off with $5,000. We have a quarter of that in the market right now. $1,250. So again, we have that leeway to be a little bit aggressive. Um, so let me know if there's any other questions about that. You can go back and watch the previous one where I really walk through that. Okay. Ba -ba -ba -ba. My first time to the channel. Didn't know. Yeah, no problem. Keep asking questions a hundred percent. If we've covered it already, I probably won't spend too much time on it. Let's see here, Joe. Yep. hundred percent. Let's see here. Do you have an average? That's here. Do, do you do an average of the percentage movement of the stock to calculate your stocks? If you can afford uh, a 2% stock, but the move is plus 5%. It's tough to stay. Yeah. in the stock, big reason why I'm trading futures contracts, uh, and uh, Andrea to that point is it gives us the ability to have a very small amount of capital, but still be able to take advantage of positions. If you're in uh, a trade and because of your account size, you don't really have the ability to, to withstand what would be an intelligent exit. Then you got to pass on that trade and look for the next one. There's nothing else you can do about it. You can't, you can't take it. Great question though. Do you use uh, statistics to aim for profits such as overnight highs or overnight lows? Yes, yes, yes. Very, very, very much so. Okay, what's your opinion about harmonic patterns? The zigzag move shapes uh, after all. Okay, yeah, listen, harmonic, uh, this will be the last question because the other ones are kind of, uh, let's see here, let's see. the sound keeps drowning for some reason, just kind of some technical things here. I think some stuff we've already covered, uh, just so many things and stuff. Let's see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Do you still have. Let's see here. What's your opinion about harmonic patterns? Yeah, uh, I don't have any issues with them. I got no problems with it at all. I don't use them at all. Do you have time? Do you have a time you trade slash not trade? A hundred percent. I go live uh, around the open of the U.S. Trade till around 11, 1130, sometimes 12. I'm always off for the afternoon when we're doing these live streams. I come back after two when the uh, when the, the bond market closes, usually even closer to three. 
before I jump on, okay? Okay. Cutting off the questions right from there, that'll be the last one that we go through. Uh, we've hit a full hour already, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. It was really great reconnecting with you guys. I missed you all equally on Friday. We're doing these Monday through Thursday, so we'll be back tomorrow, we'll be back Wednesday, we'll be back Thursday, uh, and then we'll always have off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, so uh, we put up around $40 on the small account this morning. We'll be back. I'll keep you guys posted on how we end up doing in the afternoon session. We'll recap that when we meet back here tomorrow. Okay, so uh, as we get ready to wrap this thing out, let's all just hit the like button on the way out, uh, hit the heart button on the way out, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow if you can make it out for the stream. We'll trade in the morning. We'll be on here right after. So if you guys got questions, if you guys have uh, some thoughts. You can prepare that and bring it with you. I love to connect with this and, and talk about all the stuff that we need to. We have a very open format here so we can just very raw build this account, build this six-figure trading business, and then tackle any questions and issues you guys are having along the way. All right. So take care, everybody. If you're going to be on the screens between now and the next time I see you, happy trading uh, and really watch your risk. I'll talk with you guys very, very soon. Reach out if you need anything.